All right. Hello, everyone. Looks like people are still joining. We're currently at 98 participants. So we will give it a few minutes before everyone joins and we will go ahead and get started. One seventy three now. Numbers going up so fast. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Two oh eight. Okay, we'll give it a few more minutes. Two hundred and thirteen. We'll give it a couple more minutes. This is so exciting. It's like seeing the number go up. <laughs> okay. Let's see, who do we have? Everyone, super excited to be here. Thank you all for this opportunity. This is so exciting. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Feel free to use the Q&A functionality in the chat function, and um, we will start in about a couple minutes. Uh, we'll start at 12.05. And you guys are seeing the chat on the right-hand side, right? Yes. Awesome. We have people from San Diego. Exciting. St. Louis, it's amazing. Wow, we have people from the UK, how exciting. <laughs> All right, awesome. Arizona, Maryland, Tennessee, Chicago, so, so, so exciting. <laughs> Florida. Excellent. All right, three more minutes, everyone, and we will go ahead and get started. And we are also recording today's session, so just an FYI. Okay, we're currently at 261. Get a few more minutes. It looks like the audience is asking, where are our panelists coming from today? <laughs> so happy to start. I am calling in from Melbourne, New Jersey. It's about 20 minutes away from our headquarters in Roseland, New Jersey. Awesome. Thank you for that, Tashina and Tawana. I am calling in from Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. And Doreen? Sunny Arizona. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Exciting. Right in sunny Arizona. Excellent. So both places where the weather is much better than New Jersey right now. I am jealous. Yes. <laughs> I am jealous too. So yesterday I'm from New York and we got a lot of grail and then it ended up being a rain and then a hail. It was just a weird combination. So <laughs> not fun, not fun at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, awesome. So we're currently at 282 participants. I'll give it one more minute and then we will go ahead and get started. Hello from Georgia, from New Jersey. So exciting. I do see some comments about the weather becoming better this weekend. I'm, I'm so ready for it, especially after <laughs> last so week was beautiful. Yeah, it's like we had a tease last week and it went, you know, up to 20 degrees. So I cannot wait. <laughs> I started keeping my winter coat away and then I was like, nope, nope. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> One more week and then we'll be done. 
All right, excellent. So we're currently at 12. So we will go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Anne, and I'm a client marketing manager here at Fairy God Boss. Fairy God Boss is the largest career community for women. Our mission is to improve the workplace by increasing transparency, by offering tons of great resources like anonymous company reviews, job listings, articles, virtual recruiting events, and so much more to help you succeed throughout your career or your job, job search journey. We will be taking questions at the end of today's webinar. You will find the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to leave any questions as yourself or anonymously, and we will get through as many as possible at the end. We were also recording today's webinar, and it will be sent out in a follow-up email later today, along with some information about ADB, so be on the lookout for all of that. Thank you so much for joining us today for Say Goodbye to Job Hopping, Build a Lasting Career at ADB. I have the pleasure of moderating what is sure to be a fascinating conversation. ADP is one of the biggest providers of HR software solutions and has been designing better ways to work through cutting edge products that enable people to reach their full potential. Here with me today, I have three women leaders joining us to talk about their careers at ADP. I will let them introduce themselves. Tawana, would you like to go first and tell us who you are and what you do at ADP? Absolutely. I am excited to be here. Um, thank you for having me. My name is Tawana Tarbert. I am the Vice President of Implementation for Major Accounts, uh, the South Region, and I am based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Excellent. Doreen? Hi, everybody. I'm Doreen Coles, and I'm the Senior Director of Career Growth and Development. And I, as I mentioned, am out of our Tempe, Arizona office. Excellent. Tashina? Love to hear from you and what attracted you to ADP uh, originally. Sure, sounds good. Um, my name is Sashila Jaragi. I'm the VP of uh, Product Operations and Digital Transformation here at ADP from Roseland, New Jersey. Um, my career originally started in technology. So I'm a technologist by, um, by education um, and used to work at Motorola back in the, back in the heydays of Razor, et cetera. Um, I, I went from there to um, a business school and studied strategy there, went into consulting, um, was really enjoying the work that I was doing, which was around sort of strategic focus, growth for companies, et cetera. But the thing that I came to realize is in that role, I couldn't make as much impact, like see something through to the end as I could in industry. Uh, and I knew folks who used to work, who were working at ADP. I was super excited about the opportunities at HCM. Um, if this was, you know, sort of early days of Uber, early days of this whole gig economy be being defined. And it just seemed like such a, a pivotal place to work at. Um, we pay, we still pay one in six U.S. employees. So it just seemed like somewhere you could really, really have impact. And um, I also saw a lot of the work that we were doing had that intersection of technology, but technology that was really of use to employees. It got people paid, it helped them get promoted, it helped them with training, et cetera. So that's what really attracted me to ADP. Excellent. And Tawana, what about your career path and what attracted you to ADP? So I started in uh, technology as well. I was doing consulting because I was part of the military life. So consulting was the way to go at that time. But once I got stable, um, I looked for an opportunity that I could grow in. That was my main. I had, you know, three months, six months assignments. I wanted to actually stick somewhere and be a part of a community and be a part of a culture. And so I was looking for different opportunities. And um, I was at a company for 10 years and that company had a merger and I was part of the merger that got left out. So I was relocating. I'm originally from New Jersey, and I was actually living in California at the time. And I relocated after that layoff to New Jersey, and I was looking for opportunities. I started a small company and realized quickly that my, my window of opportunity was very small. And I was one of those people who wanted to always learn and grow. So it was important for me to look for a place that had those opportunities. And ADP was all over. Um, I had heard about ADP from previous employers that had actually had an acquisition where they actually were bought out by ADP. Mm -hmm. And I remember some employees of friends of mine that still worked there was talked about how great ADP was. And so I said, you know what, this looks like a place for me. I looked at the opportunities. I saw that they were not just across the United States, they were international and global. And I thought, this is a place that I know that I could use my gifts and talents and grow and learn. So that's what first attracted me here. And I started off as a systems analyst, um, again, my background technology, and I started off in GPT. 
um, in small business, uh, and then went into retirement services and kind of worked on the mobile app. So if anybody uses our ADP mobile app, that was one of my projects that I worked on, which I loved. Um, and that was my entry way into uh, ADP about eight, almost eight years ago. So that's wow. how I started. Wow, excellent. And Doreen, I know you're a second generation adp -er. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your career path at ADP and what attracted you to the company in the first place? Sure. Um, first of all, I did not start in technology. <laughs> So I, I applied for my mom's job. Uh, she had been working for ADP for 32 years at that point. She was getting ready to retire. And she knew I was at somewhat of a career crossroads in my previous company and suggested, hey, you should apply for my job. ADP has been great to me for these last several decades. Um, so I did that. Uh, she was she was a business consultant for sales, which means she she knew her technical she knew the technology she had chops there. Uh, they didn't hire for me for that job, <laughs> probably because I didn't have any technology background, and even though my mommy referred me, didn't exactly didn't exactly work as planned. Um, but the way the story goes is my resume was on her leader's desk, and there was an executive from our service department who was in town. They were having a conversation. She was getting ready to build out uh, a larger service department in that office. It was in Chandler, Arizona. And he handed her my resume, said, she's got the background that you're looking for. And I was hired in as a client services leader for major accounts. I spent about six years in service leadership uh, with major accounts. I aspired to be a VP of, of operations or of service, because that's essentially the level of the job that I had left uh, beforehand. And one thing that our executives were talking about at that six year marker or so um, in my service life was that if you want to move up in the company, it's very beneficial to move sideways first because you learn more, you grow, you, you expand your knowledge of the business. And I thought that sounded pretty smart. So that's what I did. I moved over to the implementation side of the house and spent about four years there. Um, and it was, it was during my job in implementation when I got involved with a project. One of the things you'll, you'll probably hear is that ADP is really great at offering diverse experiences, project work. Uh, stretch assignments, et cetera. I got involved with it. It was all around the career growth and development of our associates. I raised my hand for a leadership role within the project. It was supposed to be six months. It ended up being somewhere in the two year mark. And I actually was on the team that wrote the job description for the job that I have today. So now I'm responsible for leading the strategic efforts for career growth and development for our entire enterprise, our entire population of ADP associates. That is incredible. What a great story. <laughs> All right, By the way, Doreen, we have so many stories of husbands and wives and sister-in-laws. Like it tells you something that we have so many families working at ADP. Agreed. Absolutely. Really interesting. Absolutely. These are great stories. And each one of you had had a long career at ADP. And I know you've had different titles. And Tawana, I'm, I'm going to direct this question to you. Um, so tell me more about the career opportunities that you've benefited from ADP and how has sponsorship or even mentorship played a role in where you are today? I think you're on mute. One of the reasons. <laughs> <that I laughs> there thought. you go. Uh, like so ADP was because of the opportunities. And so after I got in, um, in a technology role and I loved it. And after a few years, I was in that role for three years and I had got promoted uh, to a director and I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity for me. But technology is, is I love technology. And it's one of those things that's always fast paced. And I tell people all the time, it's always like, great, what's next? <laughs> what do you got next for me? And I started thinking about that as far as my career, like what's next for me? Um, had I always been in technology, but I started kind of dabbling into the business side of the things. And it started to become a little bit more interesting to me, understanding not only why we chose the technology we, cho we chose, but how it would impact the business that we were in. And so I started kind of researching uh, information on different groups and I joined the BRG. 
that was my first inclination. I was very, when you're technology, you're kind of hands down, you're kind of working on what you're doing. But I wanted to kind of expand my social network at ADP as well. So I joined the BRG, and it's our Cultivate BRG. And they had speaker series. And I thought, let me attend the speaker series. And the first speaker series I went to, I, I really felt like it was directed directly towards me. Like they were speaking to me because I was in that phase of what's next for me. And it was all about growing your career at ADP and reaching out to leaders. And, you know, one of the speakers said, hey, you know what, email me if you have any questions. And I'm thinking, I'm going to challenge that person and I'm actually going to email and I emailed her and I said, hey, I was, I'm going through this challenge of understanding what I need to do next. She gave me some great advice. That was my introduction to not only a BRG, but also to mentorship and sponsorship. She became a valued mentor and a sponsor for me. So after the opportunity, this, you know, she was a leader in, a, in an organization. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to keep in contact with her. She said, do your research. I started researching the different groups. I didn't know what, at that time I was in retirement services. I didn't know what major accounts was or national accounts or ESI or global view. So I started researching all the different areas. And within six months of that meeting and mentorship, she called me um, and it was very interesting. And, and actually HR called me and said, when can you, uh, we, when can we move you into that new position? And I said, huh? <laughs> What new position? Uh, apparently, you know, I had made a great impact and a role was created for me in this new organization. And that was just based off of my going to, joining the BRG, connecting with this person, mentorship and sponsorship, and a role was created for me in global business transformation. And that was, that expanded my knowledge and my, my view of ADP so much because I was able to work with all of the different business units from international as well as across the United States. It was the best thing that could happen to me. Uh, even though it was scary, because now I went from small business retirement service to this big view and having that impact, having to make impact across the organization, which is what I wanted. And that role really opened the doors for me, which led to the current role that I'm in. Two and a half years into the role, organization was, you know, different things was happening. And again, I'm at that phase where I'm trying to figure out what's my next, what I want to learn and do more. And same thing happened. I, I wanted to move to Atlanta. Um, I wanted to try to relocate. And I said, can I do this current job in Atlanta? And uh, she said, you know what? Hold on. And I trust her because I'm in the position I'm at because she told me to hold on. So I held on. And the same thing happened. I got a call from a recruiter and said, hey, so when can we schedule your interviews? And I said, huh? <laughs> you know, what interviews? And the next thing I know, I was in the process of interviewing for the, my current role of VP of implementation um, for Augusta, but I ended up getting the role in Atlanta, which is where I am today. So I'm going to tell you, sponsorship, mentorship, and creating a culture from BRGs is so valuable here at ADP. They really do embrace you. They help you and help you grow. And I love the mentorship aspect of it. I love the sponsorship. I didn't even realize what sponsorship was until I was sponsored by someone. And that's a valuable, important thing that I take very seriously, um, that someone took the time and energy and put her name out there for me. That is very important. And I, I try to do that as well to anybody that I speak to and mentor as well. So that's my story. It's been an amazing journey. And I've been very fortunate and to have that kind of mentorship and sponsorship to lead me where I am today. Absolutely. Sponsorship and mentorship are very different, but very important to, to, to growing your career. And I will ask you that question, Doreen. So how has sponsorship and mentorship played a role in where you are today? Well, I, I love the way Tawana started her story on mentorship, which was, you know, a, a quick connection. She, she emailed someone who had opened the door and, you know, had a specific objective in mind with connecting with that person. And in my history, that's really how the best mentoring relationships have happened as well. You, you have a need, you reach out to someone and, and believe me here at ADP, I mean, you can literally reach out to anyone, even our executives, um, and they will have a conversation with you. It's amazing. Uh, you, you reach out, you have that intention, you, you find if there's a connection and when, when there is that connection, it can turn into magic. It can really turn into amazing mentoring relationships. For me, um, one of the most impactful mentoring relationships I had was when I started that project that I mentioned, that, that stretch assignment that I got involved with, 
<clears throat> the executive sponsor of that, who was out of our, our corporate HR here at ADP, she, she really organically became a mentor to me. We, we weren't, you know, set up, <laughs> we weren't matched in any way. Uh, we just had conversation after conversation. And I asked her, who should I, who else should I speak with in your, in your area? And, and so she would connect me with someone else. And then I would ask that person, who else should I speak with in your area? So I made that a habit after every conversation to just ask, who should I talk to next? Um, and it turned into this amazing web and, and network of folks that really helped me to recognize that that was the way I wanted my career to go. I wanted to be in that area of the company. Not that I didn't like what I was doing. I was in implementation too. I, I liked it. It was good stuff. Um, but I really was finding, you know, my love and, and what I wanted to do in HR. And my mentor, Jill, uh, was instrumental in making those connections for me, in putting my name out there, uh, in helping write the job description. <laughs> um, and then luckily, you know, in helping what I call the planetary alignment, the stars, the moons, the suns that all got into the perfect spot in the sky for me to be selected for that role. Incredible. That is incredible. And Tashina, now back to you. So how have, I think we all have very sorry, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Sorry. I was just about to ask the same question. I, sponsorship and mentorship played a role in where you are today. I was gonna say I think we all have very similar stories. And I I, I think I I hear this question quite often, right? How do you and I'm even seeing some of that in the QA, how do you prepare for that next role? And that's where there's that distinction, but also very important role that both mentors and sponsors play. So the mentor can give you specific feedback to your background, to your capabilities to say, hey, this is what you hone or this is what you showcase for that next role. And they can even give you feedback on these are the types of roles you should think about and you should look at um, versus a sponsor will make that opportunity for you. So I've been very lucky, again, as, as you heard from Tavana and Doreen also, in having both of those at ADP. Um, so mentors who have suggested, given my background, looking at GPT, and then my sponsor, uh, Don Weinstein, who used to be my manager and, and also is my current manager, who, very similar to what Tavana and Doreen said, this role was created as I was coming back from maternity. And um, he moved from his role um, in strategy to technology. And he was like, hey, Tashina, as you're coming back, I'm looking to kick off this program around digital. Would you be interested in it? Um, so it was a, you know, a, an opportunity that was created um, and offered um, through that sponsorship, um, which I'm you know, eternally grateful for. So it's, I think, exactly similar to what Doreen and Tawana were saying. Excellent. Of course. And Tawana, I'm going to go back to you. I know you touched on the BRG Cultivate. And as the co-chair of that BRG, you have a unique vantage point, right? From your perspective, how is ADP building an inclusive and supportive culture? Yeah, and I, I get asked that question a lot, right? Because of culture, especially when people know I work at ADP and that we're big on culture. So they always talk about how, what's the culture? What's the culture at ADP? And I think the BRG helped me understand the culture. Um, by joining the BRG, I was able to, because the BRGs are really designed for everyone. Um, I am a member of six different BRGs and I participate in all of them because the perspectives that you learn, the context that you get, the different viewpoints and vantage points that you have uh, really help expand not only your personal knowledge, but also your career because I've met people that I would never have met before through a BRG and the connections that we have. The BRGs are designed to really help you expand, right? And um, they are not afraid to tackle tough issues. We have been able to touch upon things and people have reached out from across, and we call them allies. So we have allies across our BRG business units and I love them um, because again, they will tell us I will join in and I will learn something every time I participate in another BRG's event. And so that to me has created a culture of allyship that I know that I can reach out. We partner on membership, we partner on events, we partner on anything cultural. So again, it's just a, mat, a way for us to cross our own intersectionality and kind of get into different areas of ADP. And again, I've met some wonderful people that I never would have met had I not been a part of the BRG. 
Um, I've met some contacts and I've learned so much about ADP through my BRG affiliateship and allyship with other units as well. Amazing. Amazing. All right, back to you, Doreen. You've been with the organization for 16 years now. You were able to create your own role starting from the ground up in June of 2015, right? How can people excel within the company? What does ADP offer their employees for career growth or even development? Wow, that is an, a large question. There is so much that we have to offer when it comes to career growth and development. I, I love that we're you know hitting hard on the BRGs because our business resource groups are without a doubt um, a game changer when it comes to your own career growth and development. I have been fortunate to be on the central board of our women's network, our, our international women's inclusion network. And like Tawana, I always recommend that you join one that matches you and you join one that doesn't match you because of that diverse perspective and experience that you're going to gain and certainly because of the folks that you will meet that you wouldn't have had an opportunity to cross paths with before. In addition to that, we have truly a slew of resources. We offer career courses monthly. Um, this is all part of, of my role. We, we created classes that people could come to and have conversation about how to focus on your personal brand and how to nail your interview and uh, how to grow right where you are, because that is also an amazing growth opportunity for the folks here at ADP. We talk a lot about what are the things that you can do to learn where you're at, to um, stretch your strengths and your skills right where you're at. And all of that is foundational and important prior to getting ready to move to another role. You, you heard the stories, you gotta do the work before, <laughs> before that phone call comes to invite you to look at something else. So, you know, my, my advice to anyone in, at any company really is think about career growth, not just in terms of when you're moving to the next. Think about how you can make a, an immediate impact in the, in the new job that you're in right away how you can grow and develop and exceed expectations in the current role. And of course, then how you can determine and develop your strengths in order to make decisions about where you will go next in your career. No shortage of resources, events, experiences, activities that you can find at ADP to grow your career. Agreed, you have to do the work. <laughs> All right, awesome. Tashina, switching back to you now. You're a VP of product operations at ADP's global product and technology division. So you must be working on exciting projects. What would you say, why would you say now is a great time for people to join ADP for a tech career? Sure. Um, so I go back to where I started with why I joined ADP. ATM and the impact that we can have on people's real life remains so super exciting. Um, the work that we do from a technology perspective, it hits um, all of the highlights of why people want to do join technology. So we are working on AI machine learning stuff. We are working on obviously a very large digital transformation. Um, we have a bunch of our next generation products that are, we are bringing to market, which really redefine the way in which we are enabling HCM and HR for our uh, clients. And all of the folks who are joining uh, ADP in the technology department, they get to work on these exciting things. So I don't think I've ever met anybody, um, even new grads or interns who have joined ADP who have said that they've been given an assignment which hasn't had real impact. They haven't been able to see that actually drive through to a product that goes to the clients. So there are these fantastic opportunities in terms of really cool technology, but also opportunities to make real impact. And I think that that combination is really what uh, hopefully excites everybody. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to switch here a little bit. Tawana, what do you think yeah. work-life balance mean to you, and how were you able to achieve that while working in an executive role? You know, I think um, work-life balance is, uh, is an interesting concept, right? And I think it really, it, it, it's different things for different people, and I think it changes over time as well. 
Um, right now, because we're in the pandemic, I, you know, everybody's work-life balance is, is shifted. Um, but I remember before that, and I was, you know, when I, my first role, I used to travel quite a bit. And I remember thinking, and I have a 15-year-old son now who is homeschooling, and yeah, that's fun. Uh, but <laughs> the work-life balance to me has always been making sure that I find a time to do what I need to do for myself, because if I am not fulfilled in a whole, I can't do any of my jobs well. I can't do my work job well. I can't do my mother job well. I can't do anything well. So it's really important for me to always find some time. And that can be, and really, I don't, you know, you, I'm not saying take a day. I mean, I could take 15 minutes and just do some woosah, right? So work-life balance to me is where I'm feeling that I'm giving all that I can with the time that I have to everything I have to do. Right? So I know that I can commit to my work and I can do what I need to do at work. I have great leaders that I know will jump in and I can trust to do that. You know, I trust my team to be able to handle things that I can take a minute or take a day. I also have to remember that I have a 15-year-old son who is now, his life has totally changed from being active and out there. So now I had to adjust that. So my work-life balance means my son may be sitting in my office on the floor reading while I'm doing a Zoom. You know, the work-life balance has changed for sure, but I think it's important to make sure that you define what that means for you, um, not what someone else thinks it should be or what you've read or whatever. I think everybody has their own individual plan of what that looks like, and you have to really be intentional about making sure that you get that. It's very important. Absolutely. Doreen, switching gears a little bit, how do you incorporate ADP's culture in your everyday work? How does it impact your team? Uh, several ways. One, one of the, one of my favorite things about ADP's culture is a recent shift that we've made the last three, four, five, five years, give or take. And it is towards being a strengths-based organization. And what that means is that we believe that every associate has potential. Every uh, associate can grow with the company. <clears throat> but we are all very unique and we all bring our own gifts, talents, uh, and natural instincts to the world and to our company. So that particular culture shift and culture evolution that we're going through has been very impactful for me and my team. I, I feel like I was, you know, looking at what I love to do before that, um, as I described in my story, um, but it was really a light bulb moment for me because as I mentioned, I liked the jobs that I was doing, but when I started to do tasks that I really loved, like this, for example, um, you know, I, I was just lit up. It was so exciting. It was so energizing for me. Um, and, you know, talking about work-life balance, you, you end up, if you're doing the things that you really love to do on a daily basis, you end up being able to balance very well because you're, the energy is just really coursing through you. So while I don't have an official team at ADP, um, I do have what I lovingly refer to as my coalition of the willing. Uh, at, at any given time, we've got 100 to 200 folks who are volunteering for the career growth and development efforts within our company. So we're giving them stretch assignments and projects to grow themselves. Uh, and, and one way that that strengths culture has um, really manifested itself in my team is that when I've got a project or an assignment that I need worked on, the way I go out to the volunteers is by saying, if you love to do this, 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 or this, this is the project for you. Come get, get an opportunity to stretch those strengths of yours, those amazing gifts that you bring to our organization and get, a, get an opportunity to do more of what you love in your everyday. I love that, Coalition of the Willing. I absolutely <laughs> love that. <laughs> All right, Tashina, do you belong to any ERGs yourself at ADP? If, if so, which ones? And how have you benefited from being involved? Um, so I won't mention some of the ones that Tavana, et cetera, have already spoken about because, I, again, I, I think Doreen, exactly as you said, belong to a bunch of different ones depending on the capabilities. I don't come from a military background, but I, that's a background that I respect a lot. And I think there's a lot of leadership learnings to come from there. So I belong to the military BRG also. 
Um, but the specific one I, I can highlight is the Women in Leadership uh, group, which is uh, something that I'm part of, um, that I has been supremely helpful for me, uh, not just overarchingly in my journey, again, providing that um, occasion for organic mentorship, um, but also very specifically, some of the work, one of the pieces of work that I did was around pay equity. Um, so this was in um, Obama era where uh, the rules around pay equity and how our clients report to it were changing. And we took that as an occasion to truly look deep and uh, focus on pay equity as something that we as ADP care about. And we ended up coming up with a product uh, based on our uh, data cloud, based on all the data that we have. It's called Pay Equity Explorer. It enables our clients to really understand where do they think there's opportunity uh, to be more equitable, what should the equitable pay look like for a specific title, role, location, et cetera. Um, and the uh, Women in Leadership was one of the BRGs that I'd reached out to to get feedback on our product as we were developing it. And it was fantastic because, you know, the, the the small things that somebody might notice as a manager or as a, or as a woman that they could give us the specific feedback on really helped it, uh, us make it a better client, a better product for our clients. So that is just like one specific way in which the BRGs have been extremely helpful. Absolutely. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And um, Tawana, this is, this is for you. So we all know that the pandemic has had a huge impact on how we communicate as a team internally, right? How are you staying connected with your teams and keeping them motivated? That's a very good question. <laughs> my team, I have to say, my team is awesome. They are a bunch of creative people who I love dearly because they have come up with some great ways. And I think the first thing is really realizing how important it is to stay connected in this pandemic because we're all at home and we, we don't have the same office where we could just walk to each other's desk and kind of congregate around, you know, each other's cubicles or something. So now it's very important. So I think they all understand how important it is to make sure that we do that. We have some great happy hours uh, over Zoom. <laughs> we have some great connects. We have Christmas riches. We do pictures. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's something, again, that you have to be intentional about because because of the pandemic, you can get caught up in everything else and you don't realize that the connection, even seeing a face, we have to make sure that we're on video now. So it's like, okay, let's get on video. We don't care how you look. If your hair is looking crazy, you got on a sweatshirt or, or your pajama slippers or whatever. It's just important that we see each other so that we can say, I see you. We can laugh about it. We can make, you know, just have a light part of this, this craziness that's going on. And just to actually be able to look at the person and say, we're still here. I'm still here for you. We're still here for each other. So we definitely, they definitely make it fun. And uh, we can come with crazy costumes and hats and glasses and shades, and we can play games on Zoom. So we make sure that we have a creative way to meet with our teams and associates on a regular basis. Very important. Totally agree with that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Doreen, passing it back to you, and this is kind of closing in on the last question here. What's your advice for anyone who's looking to pursue a career with ADP? I know we've had some questions and comments, and we will address them shortly, but wanted to get your thoughts on how you think, you know, anyone who's interested in pursuing a career at ADP, what would be your advice for these people? Sure. If you, if you don't mind, I would like to tag on to what Tawana said too, and then I promise I will answer that question. Uh, one of the things that to me has been the most inspiring um, in this you know, year that we've been under is that our executive team really um, immediately started communicating with heart. We, we got so many heartfelt messages from our executive leaders, um, blogs, videos, uh, email announcements, the the global town halls that we go to um, was so inspiring and really, I think, brought the 56,000 plus of us together in a way that we had never experienced before. So um, that was really, for me, a game changer with how we were communicating and how we were getting through this, this thing, kind of linking arms together virtually of course, because no touching. Uh, but for the, uh, for the career question, like what should folks do if they're interested in a career with ADP? Um, the first thing I would say is do your homework. I mentioned that even internally. Um, it's really important to figure out 
what you like to do and what you're great at. That combination is the winning combination. Uh, there might be things that you like to do, but you're not great at. That may not be a career for you. So really, you know, think through what do I love and what am I great at? And when I know what those activities are, how do I match those up to a job description that I might see on the career site? Once you do that, then I would look for people that are in those roles or in similar roles and, and ask them, what do you do every day? You know, is it really what the job description says? Because I wanna make sure that when I make a commitment to a role, that it's going to be one that I will be able to excel at and also that I'm gonna love. I'm gonna love doing those things. Don't get me wrong, you're, you're gonna not like some of the things that you do pretty much in any job ever, but we, we really wanna focus on making sure that you're doing something that you love and that you're great at every single day. So that by, by, um, you know, by all accounts is really what I would say is the primary thing. If you can connect with people that are within ADP and build your network, that way, that's also going to be very helpful for you. We talked about, you know, family connections. You don't have to have a mom that works at ADP or a husband in order to get in the door. Um, and as I shared, it doesn't always help anyways. But, um, you know, if, if you, we, we have a very strong referral network. And if you do know folks at ADP, tap on that network, ask them about it and see if they can, can refer you. Absolutely. And lastly, Tashina, what's your advice for anyone looking to pursue a career with ADP? Thank you so much for answering the questions in the Q&A. I see you're multitasking and I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten very good at it doing this last year, haven't we? Um, so I, I, a lot of the question, a lot of the answers that I was given on the Q&A, um, you know, we hire from a really, really diverse background. It, it, goes with sort of like how diverse the set of roles that we have really, starting from sales, implementation specialist, technology, uh, product, um, all the way through service. So a very diverse background. Knowing the capabilities in your background that you might want to highlight for a specific roles within ADP, um, and, and Doreen was saying this too, you know, doing that research, uh, highlighting those parts of your resume as you're applying for roles, reaching out to people. We have 60,000 employees across the uh, United States and internationally, there is somebody on LinkedIn who knows somebody at ADP. So reaching out through that uh, network of yours, um, you know, asking for referrals from people that who know who you are, who know what work you do, I think that is the strongest sort of way of um, uh, finding roles at ADP. Absolutely. And now that we're ending um, the session, we'll start taking questions from, from the audience. And I will start with one question that was asked in the Q&A. How do the BRGs incorporate virtual associates? I work remotely and would be interested in joining some BRGs, but are most events in person? Um, anyone want to take that? Sure, I can take it. I mean, well, you know, now we're all virtual. So, <laughs> right, we used to definitely have membership drives and things in person, but because of the virtual aspect of it, we had a speaker series that we just had one for Cultivate for Black History Month, which was amazing. So each session was recorded and it was Zoom. It was basically do video. Um, even our meetings now, we actually have our BRG meetings where we actually are you know, on camera and we're Zooming. So definitely there is a place for you if you are virtual, um, you can actually join a BRG. Um, and actually experience the same thing that we're experiencing in person, because now we're all virtual, we're all connecting that way, and we're making sure that whatever we do is now available to watch again on video, it's being recorded, so you can always be, be a part of it and be interactive. So definitely virtual is, you're, we're all virtual now. So like, we're all, all one big virtual team. <laughs> yeah, we've even, we've even seen some of our BRGs start up virtual chapters. So we, we've had a lot of uh, growth and change in this last year, as Tawana said, and, and we recognize that there will be some shifts. So, you know, virtual chapters, um, folks working from home, being invited into things that are going on locally when and if we, we get back. Um, so thank goodness for technology and, and our ability to connect in various ways. Yes, absolutely. All right, it seems like there's another question here about data analytics. 
I am interested in learning about analytics at ADP. Can you please give some examples of data analytics being used at ADP? Hmm. Sure. Um, that's again, I think one of our most one of our most robust roles. Like as if as I think about the various teams that uh, employ that role, starts all the way again from sales and implementation. We have folks in data analytics who help with project planning and and you know demand planning on the on the front hand side, um, we have uh, our inside sales team has a couple of really strong data analytics uh, leaders who are hiring a lot um, within uh, technology. As you can imagine, we have data analytics roles um, in the various uh, different uh, products. I'll do a special call out for Data Cloud, which is literally that that's our group that does collate all of this uh, rich data that we have across all of our uh, clients and create beautiful products for um, our clients and create um, uh, opportunities uh, in the data and analyst, uh, analyst role. Um, and then uh, on the service side, we do a bunch of analytics around, you know, why are clients calling us? Um, what needs can we proactively meet for them? Uh, and we have strong data analytics roles there too. So really, that's one of the most um, I think not just in ADP across <laughs> across the world right now. That's one of the most um, flexible roles uh, that, or backgrounds that you can have. Thank you, Tashina. And one more question that I think would be a good one: Does ADP intend to retain some of the remote flexibility post COVID? What is HR's perspective on the future state of the work environment? So either one of y'all can take that. That's a tough one, um, but I'll, I'll do my best to field it being the HR representative. Um, certainly we recognize that there is capability in virtual work and that we can be productive. Uh, we also know that we don't have historical information that will show us whether or not we can be productive in the long run in a virtual world. So we will be cautious about how we proceed. Uh, we, we already have a few of our offices where there are small, very small parts of our population going back into office. I'm one of those people. I go back about once a week and there are you know 50 or so folks in a building that holds 1800. Uh, so, so very small, uh, but we're gonna proceed with caution because we, we want to make sure that um, both the associate population, all of us as you know, the workers of ADP, as well as the business um, are handled with care. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that, Doreen. One more question. What is the context of, uh, let me see, are there positions that are in greater demand given the new products being launched? And I think Tashina, you're answering that one right now. I was literally about to answer that one. I'll answer it live. Um, I think this is again, true of industry, but um, a lot of our focus is around machine learning AI, um, not only in being able to proactively answer our, uh, um, our clients' questions, um, but also in how that enables a more digital journey for our clients, a lot less manual work. Um, so that is one area I think we are always looking for um, uh, support in. Um, we're also um, doing a lot of work around next gen UX, so um, what the client experience is like, um, that, those are roles that we're hiring for. We're hiring for product managers. I think those are the biggest three, I would say. Um, but yeah, th those capabilities are something we're always on the lookout for. Yeah, definitely. And someone has a more niche questions here. I have an extensive background using ADP through payroll services and BEO relationship. What would you recommend for trying to get my resume and experience noticed when applying? I think the good way is to really go on the website. I know you guys have tons of jobs, job listings, and even on the Fairy God Boss profile page, there's so many, all the new jobs are, are right on there. And there's a whole list of, you know, questions and answers about the benefits and whatnot. So I think this is a good place to start. I would agree with that. None of us are out of our talent acquisition department. So we, you, you could tell there was a little Oh, do I answer? Do I not answer? Um, I'll give I'll give a kind of a general answer in terms of if you want your resume to shine, um, 
make sure that it aligns with the role that you're applying for. <clears throat> and I think Tashina shared something earlier about, you know, bringing up or, or highlighting the experience and accomplishments that you have that match with that job description, that role that you're going towards. Those are, those are great ways for your, your resume to get noticed. Yeah, definitely. All right, we have 10 more minutes so we can take as many questions as we, as we can. But I do know we have one slide that we wanted to share, which essentially will highlight, you know, the jobs and the ways of finding the jobs. Fairy God Boss is definitely one way to do so, but I will go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see this slide that we had prepared. And this is essentially what, where you would be able to find um, the, the job opportunities. So it would be jobs at adp.com and for specific tech careers, you would go to tech.adp.com. You can also find them on social on Twitter at ADP careers, hashtag ADP life, hashtag ADP tech. And of course, Harry Godboss, they have their profile on there and they have everything that you, anything from benefits, job listings, Q and A's and all of that. Let's go ahead and go back to the questions in the Q&A to see if there's any other questions that we may be missing. You know, and I'll just say, I'm gonna tell you, when I first started, I, I remember looking for a role that was specific. You know, you have a specific role in your mind when you're applying for a job. And when I got, you know, separated from the company that I was at for 10 years, by the way, and I thought I was going to retire there, I was kind of through, you know, thrown into a tailspin. Couldn't really figure it out. I'm looking for the exact same title, the exact same pay. I'm looking for the exact same thing in my head, and it wasn't happening for me. And I think we get caught up in that, either that title or that thing we think we're supposed to do. And I really think you have to really be open to other opportunities. I came in at ADP from a vice president role at that company to a systems analyst. So when I looked at my resume, I'm thinking, that's good. And I'm thinking, how is that going to look on my resume? Right? <laughs> Not even really understanding that it didn't matter. I needed to find a career path and a career entry into a company that would allow me to grow back up to that vice president role. And I've been able to do that at ADP. So I would say, think about that when you're looking for the role. Don't look for the specific role, or the specific matching things. In, in this role today, again, my background is technology. I had never been on the operations side. I didn't know anything about implementation. I did my research. I actually learned from people who were in that role. So you have to think outside of your comfort zone sometimes. And I think that I, I was unemployed for a long time because I'm thinking, nope, I need this role with this title, with these specific skills. And I really had to kind of take a step back and really assess not only what I was good at, and that wasn't what I was doing for 10 years, but what was I good at? What was I passionate about? What did I want to grow in? What did I want to learn more about? And that changed the trajectory of my career. So I would give that advice to anyone that's out there looking or finding, trying to find a way. Don't look for the specific thing. Look, look around, right? Look, you know, look, expand your, expand your horizon a little bit. I guarantee you, you'll you pay off. Absolutely. And the audience agrees. <laughs> so then your search, think outside the box, challenge yourself. Yes. Those are all great advice. I totally agree. Doreen, Tashina, do you have any last words before we wrap the session today? Um, so I think based on the q and I, I, we do see a lot of questions about how do we apply, when do opportunities come up, how do I make sure I'm the right fit, and honestly, I think you've heard this from all three of us. So one, the opportunities are very diverse. We hire from all sorts of diverse backgrounds. There are some cultural things, I, and I think our CEO epitomizes this, the humility, the customer focus, really wanting to work together as a team. Those are really the things I think that make people at ADP successful and stand out. Um, so highlighting that uh, in any of the roles that, uh, you know, you're highlighting from your background, that, that, that is just good across the board, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I would tag on to that. Uh, again, both the ladies have really described this as well, that 
there are probably lots of skills and strengths that you have that are transferable to many of the roles that we have available and open. So I see a lot of questions about, you know, I have this specific experience, which role would be best for me? I love the way Tawana said it, because again, that's, that's my story too. I thought I should be something and, you know, kept trying to get that something and then figured out, geez, I never would have been happy probably or good at that. So thank God I went this way. Um, you know, look at, uh, the, the bigger possibility, like open your eyes to the vast amount of career possibilities that are available at ADP. Uh, use your network, as we've already said, shine up that resume, but most importantly, truly figure out what you like to do and what you're good at and find roles that will allow you to do that regardless of what the title is. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Doreen. And ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure getting to know you just a little bit and sharing your experiences with us. We will be sending out the recording later today, and we'll also be sending out a link to their Fairy Godboss profile page where you can learn more about the company, the benefits, and all of their openings. You can also follow them on social. Their Twitter handle is at ADP Careers and visit their website, jobs.adp.com or tech.adp.com. And thank you again, everyone, for attending. I hope to catch you at the next webinar. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.